Okay, this is the question that we did in class. Um, they're asking you to calculate, um, this is a lever that's pivoted at point A, which is this point here, and it's anchored by a steel cable here, and there's a force pulling down on the lever here. So we're dealing with two forces. It's a very simple lever problem. So because your pivot's at this point here, um, we know that this is um, our load is in the center, so it's a class two lever, as we discussed in class. So we can do a free body diagram for this, um, just to simplify it a little bit. Our pivot point is point A, and that's our lever. We now our force is at 100 newtons, and it's at right angles to that lever, which is nice for us. And so we know the distance of the pivot is. 0 0.153 meters, we convert to meters. So we convert all our distances to meters and all our forces to newtons. And we know um, that our um, cable, steel cable, is the force acting in this direction into the wall. And it is not um, at right angles to the lever. And we know um, that the distance from that force to our pivot point is the difference between 153 millimeters and 118 millimeters. So we can work that out quite easily. It's 0 0.035. So you get your calculator out um, and you would say um, 153 minus 118 equals 35 millimeters divided by 1,000 to convert it to metres, because there's 1,000 millimetres in a metre. So we know that that distance there is 0 0.035 metres. And they're asking for the force in the cable, which is this force here. Now, what do we know about this system? As we discussed in class, it's not going anywhere. So we know that um, some of our forces, both horizontal and vertical, sigma, which is sum of forces is going to be equal to zero. And we also know that the sum of our moments, clockwise being positive, sigma, sorry, sigma moments is equal to zero. You should write that on every single equilibrium problem you ever get. Sum of forces equals zero, sum of moments equals zero. Even if you don't put all this stuff, but this is good to put two to show the sense of your actual um, what's positive, what's negative, because you could change that. You could make up negative and down positive, and to the right negative, and to the left positive, as long as you were consistent through the whole problem. But we're going to always use this convention: up is positive, to the right is positive for forces, and clockwise is positive. But don't be surprised if you see in some textbooks that for moments, um, anti-clockwise is deemed to be positive. Um, it's just the conventions that you're going to use. So that's your free body diagram. So we're going to use for this problem this idea here, sum of moments is equal to zero. And that's how we're going to get to our answer. So you've got to remember that a moment, okay, moments are equal to force times perpendicular, 90 degrees distance, okay? So that's the first thing you gotta remember. So if this is our pivot point here at A, and this force is acting at 90 degrees to the lever, we know that that distance is the perpendicular distance because the force is perpendicular, okay? So we know that that's a perpendicular distance. So we can just use the distance along the lever. So that's, that's a pretty simple one. So we're gonna go positive, it's clockwise, sigma of moments is equal to zero. Therefore, zero equals, first we're gonna take all the forces that are gonna make this spin in a clockwise direction around point A. Okay, so we're gonna say 100 newtons times, what's our distance? 0 0.153, that's from there to there. That's our first moment going clockwise. Well, if we've got something going clockwise, we need something to balance it going anti-clockwise, otherwise our moments aren't going to be equal to zero. So we're gonna say minus, what force is gonna make this go around in this direction, around point A? Well, there's only one force going in this direction, and that's F. So it's gonna be minus F, which is what we're actually trying to work out, multiplied by a distance. Now, you could be tempted to use this distance here like we did for this one. 
And you would be wrong in assuming that because this force is not the perpendicular distance, okay? We need this distance um, here, okay? The distance is perpendicular. So anywhere along this force, because we can use that idea of transmissibility of forces, we need to, we need to work out that perpendicular distance. So we, whenever we're calculating a moment, we have to use perpendicular distance. So you can see here um, that this force here, the 100 newtons, makes a right angle with the le actual lever. So that is a perpendicular distance, okay? So we need another perpendicular distance, okay? So what you can do is, in your actual diagram up here, they've also told you that that is 45 degrees, okay? Oh, naughty Mr. Komonos, I always put FBD there to show that you know that that's a free body diagram, okay? There's marks all over this page already. Okay, three marks, they're probably going to give you um, at least a, a mark, maybe two marks for what's on the page already. Okay, so we're going to say force times the perpendicular distance. Do we know that distance? Okay, we don't know it, but if you look at this part of the free body diagram, you've got one side here, which is 0 0.035. We've got this line here coming up, and we know that that is... That angle is 45 degrees, and we know that this force, going this way, our force um, gives us 90 degrees in there. So we're looking at this triangle, I'm going to just make it really, really obvious. That triangle there, okay, we know that that angle is 45 degrees. We know that that's the right angle there, so this is the hypotenuse, 0 0.035, because we know that distance from there to there. Um, so now we need to work out um, this distance here, and that's going to be adjacent. Um, if we go, if we can look at, um, we could do sine or, or cos really, because um, we could take either angle. But we're going to take this angle here, 45, and we're going to say um, adjacent on hypotenuse. So we can go cos of um, cos 45 degrees is equal to this distance is perpendicular distance here the perpendicular distance we're trying to work out is equal to d over 0 0.035 okay um, i know in class i said sine because you could take the sine of this angle because both these angles are 45 because there's 180 degrees in a triangle um, we'll do it we'll do both um, in our answer and we'll see if we get the same answer so now we know that d is going to be equal to, we have to get rid of this 0.035, so we multiply both sides by 0.035, and we get D equals 0.035 times cos, 40, cos 45 degrees. So now we can complete our formula because we know that D value. So we're going to say 0 is equal to 100 by 0 0.153 minus F times 0 0.035 times cos 45 degrees. And now all we have to do is solve for F. So I'm going to take all of this over the other side. I'm going to say um, 0 0.035 times cos 45 degrees F is equal to, and we're going to do the um, 100 times 0.153. And we can, this is really easy because we can just move the decimal point two places. That's going to be equal to 15.3. And now we have to get rid of this um, 0.035. So we divide everything by 0.035 times cos 45 degrees. So we get F equals 15.3 divided by 0 0.035 times cos 45, which equals, we put it into our calculator, 15.3 divided by, I'm going to do an open bracket, 0 0.035 times cos 45, close, close bracket, equals 618.21 newtons. And we know if we're pulling on the lever this way, that this is going to be in tension because compression is squashing something, tension is pulling something. Okay, so we can say that that is going to be tension. So you can put in brackets, tension. Okay, 
And you could even, if you wanted to be a real smart ass about it, put an arrow going this way as well to show the direction, horizontally to the left. That is your answer, 618.21. Now I was saying you could have used cos as well. If I put in um, 15.3 uh, divided by 0 0.035 times sine 45, um, we're going to get the same answer, sorry, 15.3 divided by open bracket 0.035 times sine 45, close bracket, close bracket, 618.21. Because we know that um, sine 45 degrees is equal to 0.707 and cos 45 degrees is equal to 0.707. So for this instance, um, you could use um, either. But like I said, if you're, if you're looking at that triangle, we knew the hypotenuse, we needed to calculate the adjacent. So cos is the correct, correct one to use for that situation, unless you were looking at this angle here, which like I said, you can calculate as well using the fact that there is 180 degrees in a triangle. Okay, um, so that is your answer and you will put it up here, 618. 0.21 Newton's tension. Hopefully that helps. Um, like I said, the main thing you got to remember is that you just need to calculate your moments and remember that um, the distances that you use to calculate moments have to be perpendicular distances. So if you've got a lever and if this is your pivot point here and the, and the force is acting at 90 degrees, you can use that distance to the pivot point, okay? But as soon as you, your, your force is not um, at perpendicular, you need to use the perpendicular distance. So I would need to transmit that line this way and work out where it crosses at 90 degrees, okay? Um, so that's where you have to start using trigonometry to calculate perpendicular distances. And that's why they gave you that 45 degrees, so you could calculate. Anyway, I hope that helps. I am going to get, I'm gonna give you a copy of this um, in class. I'm gonna get you to watch this video and I'm gonna get you to do that problem and make sure you understand how this problem works because they do this type of problem quite often in the examination. See you in class.